Hello and welcome to Sam's Planning Science. I'm Sam. I'm your host. I'll be Sam's Planning the Science. And today we're taking a State of the Union. The Sam's Planning Science State of the Union. The S-S-S-O-T-U. Yeah. But before we get into that, let's not skip the pleasantries. Hello. How are you? How's your week going? I hope it's going well. Um, this week I am away at a conference. So I'm actually recording this on Monday evening so that I can edit it and post it on Friday. Friday the 13th, by the way. Spooky. Um, And since I I recorded episode 41, the one right before this, uh, on Saturday, like two days ago, um, I don't really have the time to do my due diligence in learning a new topic and doing my research and reading papers and all that stuff. So I thought I would use today's episode to do a Sam's Planning Science State of the Union, you know, and sort of reintroduce the podcast and also share how far this product has come in the first year and where I would like it to go in the next year. Um, So that brings us to our questions for today, because of course this episode has questions. It's a Sam's Planning Science episode. Um, We're always asking questions here at Sam's Planning Science. So we have three questions for today. The first one is, what is this podcast doing? It's sort of like a refresher as to why I'm doing what I'm doing, Um, the motivation behind the podcast and what I hope to achieve from it. The second is, uh, how is the podcast going? So basically an update on what I've done. My first episode went out January, the first week of January in 2022. So it's been a little over a year since I started making this podcast. So it's a little update on what I've done. And, um, yeah, not, and that's it. It's an update on what I've done. (laughs) End of sentence, period. The third question is where is this podcast going? So I'm basically going to look ahead into the next year and see what I'd like to achieve this year. Um, so there's no like science this episode and, um, maybe that makes it a little boring, But I don't know, maybe you're interested or you just want a refresher or maybe, you know, you haven't really listened to this podcast, maybe before ever. So it's like your first episode, you can get like the motivation, like the overall goal of this podcast and then, you know, learn a little bit about what to expect going forward. Um, And also, if that's you, welcome. Thanks for listening. Um, And maybe if you're a longtime follower, you just want an update and being like, how is this thing going? You know? Anyway, you get it. Just a warning. There's no science. You're not going to learn anything today, uh, sadly. But so we won't learn a little bit probably, but hopefully we'll laugh a little bit. Hopefully. Um, okay. So those are the questions for today. My computer is already breathing heavy. So excellent start. Um, so question one, what is this podcast doing? What am I achieving with this podcast? And I guess really what's the motivation behind this podcast? Podcast, podcast, podcast. How many times can I say that word before you shut this off because it's getting too annoying? Anyway, I think the main goal of this, this here thing, um, is for me to make science accessible. I want to bring science to people who might not experience it every day, who might not deal with it every day um, in their jobs. I want to make it accessible to people who maybe feel removed from science. Um, And I also want to make it fun and make it interesting Um, because I know a lot of people, at least in school, A lot of people who don't do science in their everyday jobs think about science in terms of like the classroom and, oh, when I was in high school, I took, you know, biology or physics or whatever. And like, that's your impression of science, I guess, and your memory of science, which is fine, totally valid. Um, But I think when we're kids, we're young, we don't really maybe appreciate how fun and how interesting science can actually be. 
Um, and maybe this is just someone who is like a total nerd. It's coming from a total nerd, right? Like I've always thought science was fun and interesting, but I'd like to think that maybe now as we get older, we're like living in this world. A lot of things are happening around us. And a lot of those things are happening because of science or like as a result of some sort of science. And I'm rambling so bad, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to make science interesting to people so people can question their surroundings and sort of, um, you know, see the beauty of science all around them and also make it accessible to them so that they don't, they don't feel like, oh, that's not for me or, oh, I've missed the boat on being a scientist or, you know, this is too far behind my comprehension because not for nothing. That's not true. If I can understand science, anybody can. Ask anyone that knows me. I'm actually an idiot. I might have a PhD in biomedical engineering, but I am an idiot. Firstly, foremostly, I am stupid. Um, and that's okay, right? That's, that's fine. Those two things can be true at the same time. I can be smart and I can be an idiot. I'm living proof of that. Um, but yeah, the goal is to make it accessible and to make it fun and to hopefully get people to appreciate that science is everywhere. It's all around us and whether we recognize it or not, it impacts every little thing that we do. Um, so that's the motivation for me doing this podcast. Um, I am not a professional science communicator. Um, so maybe I guess if I'm doing this as like an introduction, I should say that I have a PhD in biomedical engineering, but I don't really have too much experience with science communication, particularly communicating science to the public, right? I communicate my science at research conferences and at lab meetings and like to other scientists, but those are people who talk a lingo if that's the right word, talk a language that is like expert level. Like we, as scientists, look at the little fine details and all of the specific mechanisms that happen and all the level that's up here, when in reality, do these little things really, really impact what you're doing every day? Probably not. But they contribute to a bigger picture that does impact what you're doing every day. And scientists, I'm including myself in this, are really bad at translating their very specific work to a bigger picture and then translating that bigger picture to something that the public can understand. Scientists forget that not everybody's a scientist, right? Whenever I think about science, I think about my parents who haven't taken a science class since maybe the 1980s, you know? I think about them a lot when I'm talking about science because I want to be like, this is something that could impact them. Do they understand what I'm saying? And I think that's the case for a lot of people. A lot of people haven't taken a science class in a long time and they're very removed from it. Um, and because of that removal, they might not be interested in, interested in it. They also might feel that they're, you know, it's just not for them. And that I think is not true. Science is for everybody, um, everybody who's interested in it. And um, I think we all should be interested in it because, as I've mentioned numerous times already, it impacts us, our daily lives. So um, that's my motivation. And that's a little bit about me. I have no experience with science communication, so this podcast, why I started it, was to sort of get into the world of science communication, trying to build my skills of translating the nitty gritty, very specific mechanisms of science to a bigger picture and then communicating that bigger picture to the public. Um, so I hope I'm doing a good job at that. I think I've grown a little bit in my ability to do that. Um, but you know, there's always room for progress. We'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, so that's what is this podcast doing? Hopefully it's making science accessible and it's making science fun and it's making, helping people to appreciate that science is everywhere.
Okay. Great. Um, if you're watching on the video, I can't stop talking with my hands, so I just did a little dance. Okay. Um, next question. How is this podcast doing? This is like the update from last year to now. How is this podcast doing? Now, obviously, I want to collect all the data as a scientist. So um, towards the end of last year, when I actually really started taking this seriously and being like, okay, this is something that I can do long term, I started... I started, hello, <clears throat> my throat cut out on me. I started collecting podcast data and like analyzing it. So most platforms allow for like some sort of analytics on their own platform. Um, but I'm going to like pull it and keep track of it on my own because I have multiple platforms that I'd like to sort of combine and better understand. Um, so... For this question, how is the podcast doing? I thought that I would show some recent data and sort of walk through the recent data. Um, so if you're not watching, that's okay. I'm gonna like say the numbers just so you get an idea. Um, but right now we're gonna be looking at like the podcast analytics um, based on the data that was collected. The latest data points were from New Year's Day, January 1st. Um, so I actually don't think that that data includes the data from the last episode of last year. Probably should have waited to collect that data, but whatever. Um, regardless, uh, let's get into the data, the results. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to look at was podcast subscribers. For each of these, I started keeping track in October of 2022. And then the last data point, like I mentioned, was January 1st, 2023. So it's basically like the last two and a half months of last year. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to look at was podcast subscribers across multiple platforms. So uh, the podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Um, by the way, I, well, I guess I was going to say if you use a different one, let me know and I'll put it there. But if you use a different podcast platform, you're not even hearing this right now. So never mind. Um, <laughs> but maybe you have one that you prefer that I don't upload to. Let me know because um, it's very easy to upload. I just don't really know what people listen to podcasts on. I use Apple Podcasts. Um, I know a lot of people use Spotify. Um, but if you have one that you prefer to use, let me know. Um... Okay, I started the sentence five different times, but <laughs> here we're looking at podcast subscribers across of all of the platforms. So I'm just going to cite the data from the January 1st, 2023, like the most recent data point, um, because over the last two and a half months, they were pretty stagnant, not much changed. Um, but as of January 1st, 2023, January 1st, I think I might've said December, I meant January you got it. You know what I mean. Um, as of January 1st, 2023, um, we, I had the most subscribers. So this is people who listen to the podcast, not just listen to it, but like follow it or subscribe to it. I guess the terminology depends on the platform that you're using. Um, I think on Apple it's follow, but I think on Spotify it's subscribe. I could be wrong. Um, but regardless, the people who like regularly follow the show um, is most popular on Spotify with 20 followers. Uh, the next most popular is YouTube with 16, then Apple with 14, and then Google has five. So I guess as far as platforms go, it seems like Google's the least popular. Um, but again, if, like I said, if there's one that I'm not using that you prefer that I use, you can always reach out and let me know and I can put it elsewhere as well. Um, okay, so that's the podcast subscribers. That's the number of people who follow the podcast. But for Apple and Spotify podcasts, they actually also track the number of listeners. So interestingly, um, 
there are more listeners than followers. I guess it's not that interesting, right? Because people listen without following. I think that makes sense. Um, you know, maybe people tried it and they were like, this is not for me to each their own. Um, but Spotify listeners was, I had more Spotify listeners than Apple listeners total. I think Spotify was around, uh, 28 and Apple was around 24 ish. We'll say 24. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, that's just another measure, another metric that I'll keep track of as well. Um, I guess from that, I could really think about, you know, if there are going to be a lot more listens than follows, maybe there are people who listen and try it and like, don't really want to hear more, which is a little sad. Um, <laughs> but again, you know, everybody's got their own taste. I get it. I'm not going to be everybody's taste, no pressure. Um, but yeah, I guess that's like an interesting metric to keep track of the listeners versus the subscribers. So I'll be keeping track of that. Definitely. Okay. So next I looked at podcast listen time and podcast streams. So Apple is the only platform that reports both numbers, which is like the total time people spent listening and the total of times that people streamed an episode. Um, and then Google reports only the listen time and Spotify reports only the streams um, or starts rather. They have a stream and a start measure, but I chose starts. Um, so for both measures, Apple listeners are higher. So Apple, for the listen time, um, Apple was much higher than Google with over 52 hours. It was 3,120 minutes of listen time on Apple. And Google had 500, about 500 minutes listened or about eight hours listening, um, which I guess makes sense because less people were listening on, less people were subscribed on Google. So... I guess that checks out. Um, but then for the podcast stream, so the number of times that people played the podcast, um, Apple was much higher than Spotify. Um, Apple had around 621 all-time plays, whereas Spotify had 144 all-time plays. So that sort of was a head-scratcher for me because Spotify had more subscribers and more listeners, um, but I guess that just means that the Apple listeners were more loyal. They came back to listen numerous times. Um, so shout out to my Apple podcast listeners. And if you listen on Spotify, you better, you better up your game because Apple's beating you out by a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a, actually a good, that's smart. I'm going like, to create a competition. It's all part of my master plan to get more streams over time. Um, no, but seriously, I don't know. I, I don't really know what to get from this right now other than just like, oh, this is something that I can keep track of. And, you know, I will go into it a little bit more later, like the importance of tracking it over time. Um, like I said, this is only the last two and a half months of last year, so it doesn't look like much progress, but if... All of these graphs started at zero last January. So um, I guess that's something to be proud of, you know. Um, so I have come a long way and, you know, getting in foreshadowing to question three, hopefully I will continue to go a long way. Okay. One last thing that I wanted to look at for how is this podcast doing the update was the social media audience. Social media is really how I think I'm going to get the word out about this show and really grow my listening audience. Um, and I think, because I feel like a lot of people find out about podcasts through TikTok or Instagram or whatever. At least I have definitely found podcasts, and inst podcasts through Instagram and TikTok. Um, so I think one way to measure this among many other measures for like interaction is follower count. Um, Instagram in particular, I haven't really checked in TikTok, but I know Instagram has a lot of good like impressions data and like how many people viewed it, how many people interacted with it and all that stuff. 
Um, but for now, I'm just looking at follower counts. Um, I feel like it's a good way to measure like people who are, you know, keeping up with the podcast if you're following on those accounts. Um, so as of January 1st, 2023, the largest following that I have is on TikTok with 139 followers. Um, I honestly can't say how many of those accounts are like real people that actually wanted to follow the podcast. Um, because I had my TikTok account for a long time before I made it my podcast TikTok. So it might've just been like random people following for whatever reason, maybe robots. I don't know. Um, (laughs) but I, you might notice that I, um, I started these plots. I started accounting this data in the middle of October and there was a pretty big jump in the first between the middle of October and the end of October. And, um, I think that's cause I started, I made a couple of reels about like, not reels cause they were on TikTok. Okay. Boomer. Um, <laughs> I made a couple of TikToks that were like, Hey, this is my podcast. Follow along. And then I like made a couple of clips that, um, I put out on TikTok and a couple of people saw it and followed. Um, so that I think, you know, got my audience up on TikTok by the beginning of November to around 139 followers. But otherwise, my other accounts, so Instagram has been pretty stagnant, um, bordering around like 50. I think I'm up to like 60 followers now on tic- on Instagram. And then Twitter has about seven followers. Um, I think Twitter as the lowest makes sense because I don't put that much effort into Twitter. I don't really tweet that often, if ever, Um, because I feel like it's not as interactive as Instagram and um, TikTok. But if you are on Twitter and you think that I should spend more time on Twitter, then I will uh, for the podcast that is not my own personal Twitter. Um, (laughs) But yeah, those are my social media audiences. One of my New Year's goals, which we'll get into in the next question, is um, working on my social media presence. So I think these measures, the like, you know, follow the subscribers, the listen time, the streams, all that stuff, and as well as my social media audience, um, will hopefully all increase as I get more consistent with my social media presence and my posting online. So that's that. So that's question two. Now we'll move on to question three, which is where is the podcast going? Um, There's lots of room for improvement. I think specifically thinking about this medium, this podcast, um, I have a lot of ideas (laughs) on how to improve it. Um, I think I'm... Finding my voice, especially compared to the earlier episodes, I think the earlier episodes I was very nervous, and sometimes I still do kind of get nervous um, when recording, but I think I'm definitely finding my voice, and in building my science communication skills, I think I'm also building like my confidence with being able to communicate science, which I think is it's like a positive feedback loop of like, if I feel confident, then I'll do well. And I, if I do well, I'll feel confident. And it's just like a cycle in and of itself. Um, But yeah, I mean, I I think I can always improve my my science communication skills. And I hope, I mean, that's why I'm doing this, right? I'm hoping that I'm explaining science well enough that people can understand and people can learn from it and internalize it and, you know, use it in their day-to-day life and learn a new fun fact that they can share at a party or whatever. Um, so I hope that in the next year, my sidecom skills will improve my science communication. If you're fancy, um, (laughs) the next thing I want to improve also is like the, excuse me. The next thing that I want to improve also is my, the video quality, I guess, of the podcast. Um, I kind of talked about this in the New Year's episode, the 
setting goals with science again episode. Um, but I do want to improve the video quality. I think that it would be good to have, I mean, Zoom works well enough, but I think it would be, there's a way to make it like fancier. You know, there's a way to make it not as clunky and make it look more professional looking. And I think by the end of 2023, I want to have a podcast that looks like it's, you know, like produced somewhere. Like I want it to look like, oh, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Cause right now I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I want to work on like my video editing skills and, um, you know, really use this medium of video and audio to my advantage. So that's another place that I want to improve. And then lastly, I want to have guests on the show. By the end of 2023, I would love to have guests. I'm not sure in what capacity. I don't know if I want to have like scientist guests on. I think that would be really fun to have like experts come on and like ask them about their research and, you know, have them, ex have them Sam explain their own work and I can like ask questions and sort of like interview them. That's one capacity that I was thinking of. Another capacity is to have like my friends and my family come on and, you know, they ask me questions ahead of time so that I have time to research, but they send me questions and I answer them to them and we can have like a back and forth conversation. And I think one reason why I really wanted to do this was because a lot of times I'm talking <laughs> and I don't know how the sentence is going to end. What's that Michael Scott quote? No, but really sometimes I, I am like presenting here and I'm like answering one of my questions and I'm like, I don't even know if people are going to like, I don't even know if what I'm saying is making enough sense so that people can understand it. Whereas if someone is here with me and I say something and it doesn't make any sense, they could be like, Sam, you're making no sense. Explain it better. You know, and I get that like immediate feedback, I guess, on my communication skills. So that's something that I really want to do in this year as well. But of course that comes with additional tech things, right? Like I have a second microphone, um, you know, but if I want to implement like video, it might be a little more challenging. Um, if I want to, you know, depending on how I want to present the data or whatever that I'm showing, um, there's a couple of uh, challenges that are going to come with that, but I think it'll be worth it because I think it'll be more rewarding for my listeners, I hope, and also for myself, um, selfishly. <laughs> um, okay, so those are some ways that I want this show to improve over the next year. Um, I also want to grow my social media audience, like I mentioned for question two. I think it's a really good way to get the word out. And um, my goal for this year is that for each episode of the podcast, I want to have, I don't know if you can hear that, my heater's turning on. <laughs> um, I'll throw back to my old apartment when that clanky heater was right next to me as I would record. Anyway, um, I think for this coming year, for each episode that I put out, I want to put out three Instagram posts and one TikTok per episode. And I guess I could share those posts on Twitter as well, if people use Twitter. Although I feel like I might just dump Twitter because it's like not really worth the time. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, three Instagram posts and one TikTok per episode. So the three Instagram posts will be, if you're already following on Instagram, by the way, Sam Splaining Science, nope, at Sam Splaining Sci, that one. Um, if you're already following on Instagram, you know that I, after every episode, I post like the episode screen grab and then like maybe a clip of the podcast. And that's like my go-to Instagram post. So I'm going to keep up with that. So every episode when I post it, will have like the title slide and then maybe like a clip of the podcast. That'll be the first post on Instagram. The second, I'm going to post like a static photo that's like related to the topic of the episode. Um, so whether that's going to be like, you know, a picture of something or like a meme or like a diagram or a figure that I make, something that's like a static photo that you can share if you want to. 
um, or you can just look at and appreciate. That's also wonderful. Um, and then the third post that I want to do on Instagram is going to be a reel that I'll also put on TikTok for my one TikTok per episode. And that's just basically going to be a short video summarizing the main points of that episode. Um, and you know, that could be good for, you know, on TikTok or if people scroll on Instagram reels to like reach out to people who don't follow that they might see that and like learn something and be like, Oh, that was interesting. And then, you know, check out the page. And if they like what they see, they can follow and they can listen to the podcast. And then all my numbers would go up. Um, you know how it goes. You, you're not stupid. You're not an idiot like me. You don't have to, you get it. All right. So that's my social media audience, uh, goal is to like post consistently and go from there. Okay. And then I also have some specific goals. Cause remember we have to make smart goals that have to be measurable. Um, so I have some goals that by the end of 2023, I want to Im- increase my subscriber count. So across all platforms, my goal is to have 500 subscribers by the end of 2023. Um, right now, I think I'm at 55. <laughs> I think it was like less than 60. Um, so we have a long ways to go. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm going to put in work this year. So it'll, I think it'll work out. Um, I also want to have by the end of 2023, 2000 streams across Spotify and Apple platforms. I currently have 765 for the first year. I got 765 streams and my goal is to have a total of 2000 across both years for, um, for 2023. What? By the end of 2023, I want to have 2,000 across both years across Apple and Spotify platforms. And then my third goal is that I want to have 10,000 minutes of um, listening time across Apple and Google platforms. So I'm currently at 3,578. Um <laughs> So essentially what I want to do is I want to more than double my first year measures in my second year. And, um, that will hopefully come from people who, you know, come across my page and, you know, like my content and find it interesting, discover the podcast that way, you know, subscribe and listen and all those things. Um, we will see, but only time will tell. (laughs) Um, it's, I think it seems kind of crazy. It does seem very ambitious. Um, but realistically, all I really have to do to do this is have like maybe one TikTok, maybe, maybe not one, probably more than one, maybe like four TikToks pop off and then I'll get 500 subscribers. I feel like I, I'm very confident that if people see it, they'll like it, you know, and maybe that's a false sense of confidence, but whatever. Um, but yeah, if I have like one, one TikTok go off, <laughs> not one, four, four TikToks go off, then I think I'll get there. Um, no, but seriously, I think um, like regularly posting episodes and then regularly advertising in the three Instagram posts slash one TikTok per episode, like I plan on doing, um, I think that's going to help me with exposure and then people will find it and then they'll, you know, subscribe. So yeah. So that's what to look for in the coming year where this podcast is going. Um, so that is the end of the Sam explaining science state of the union. In closing, we are on a sturdy trajectory upward that hopefully will only continue to go upward with the participation of myself and hopefully everybody who would like to follow along. I hope to see many of you in the future, interact with you on social media and, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback. Speaking of feedback, oh my God, that was totally an unplanned, what's that called?
What's that called? Transition? Segue. That's the word I was thinking of. That was an unplanned segue. So here we have the takeaway for today's episode, the State of the Union takeaway. I'm giving you homework. I'm sorry. I know I I really didn't want this to be like a lecture class type of deal, but I have to give you homework. I'm asking you to please fill out an anonymous survey that you can find at the link in the episode description. I will also share the survey on Instagram. It's a very short survey, less than five minutes of your time. I just want to learn a little bit about you, what you think about the show, um, how you access the show, your, um, you know, any feedback that you have, positive and negative. It's anonymous. Again, it's anonymous. So you can be totally honest. I won't know who says what. Um, I just really want to know what people think about the show. And I feel like the people that I talk to, they're just nice to me because they, they're, they're saying it to my face. (laughs) So I think if maybe, you know, I feel like I can get more honest feedback when I'm like, I don't know who's saying this. Just tell me what you think. Honestly, genuinely. Um, so please, please share all of your thoughts, the good ones and the bad ones. Um, because it is anonymous. We love an anonymous survey because you can talk shit, but you can't get hit. That's pretty nice. Um, that's honestly the best of both worlds. Talking shit and not getting hit. Sign me up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so feel free. Talk your shit as long as it helps the podcast. If, As long as there an, there's a means to... What? There's an end. What is it? The end and the means? The means means to the end? I gotta stop saying things that I don't know. What's wrong with me? You think I'd learn. Anyway. Um, but yeah, please give me all of your feedback, good and bad. Um, I just want to learn a little bit more about the audience and what you expect. And then, um, you know, how you take in the show, things of that nature. Um, and it's anonymous, so you can be mean if you want to, and I can't come for you. Um, that's how you know I survived grad school when I'm literally begging for criticism, even if it's your worst criticism, you know, like you can't break me. Nothing can break me. I, you have no idea what I've been through. Um, you can't break me. Your words can't break me. Give me your worst. But maybe don't because, you know, manners matter and all that stuff. Um, (laughs) But yes, please take the survey. The link is in the episode description. I'll also share the link on Instagram so you can check it out there. And it'll be open for a couple weeks. I'll I'll close it at the end of the month. So um, please fill it out. I'd love to hear your opinions. And even if it's your worst... Shoot me straight. Is it a good podcast? Is it a bad podcast? What do you want more of? What do you want less of? Um, you can try to break me, but you, you can't. You won't. I dare you to try, but it's not going to happen. Anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. That is all for this week's episode. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and review the podcast wherever you're listening and subscribe on YouTube, please. You can also follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at SamSplainingSci. So connect with me there and ask questions if you'd like. You can also submit your questions to samsplainingscience.com slash ask. So if you have anything that you'd like me to samsplain, ask away. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. You probably didn't learn a bit, but I hope that you laughed a little bit. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.